So uh, to kick things off, uh, we have a lot of young aspirational engineers who would be watching this. So what would you like to tell them? Sure. Well, um, really, when it comes to engaging with, with Dyson, and, and, and certainly it's part of my experience, we've got a number of uh, elements of engagement from a, a young age all the way through to graduate level. Um, and so it really begins at, at the school, at school age, at high school age. So we have a, a, a program called the James Dyson Foundation. And so that's really where we take a, a team of experienced Dyson engineers and we will infiltrate into a, a school for a day or two and will bring with us uh, challenges for the uh, children to understand and to break down and to really problem solve and we really want to see them being as creative as possible. So actually uh, that early engagement with Dyson can begin at, at school level. Uh, beyond that we, we also have uh, what we call DIET, so that's the Dyson Institute of Engineering Technology. So that, that opened its doors last September and so we have our first cohort of, of uh, engineers uh, and students that are based in our Malmesbury campus studying uh, their engineering uh, degree uh, within Dyson um, on campus. Okay, so another thing is with the advent in technology, you have seen that uh, in earlier days even as an engineer, maybe you were when you were in college it was a lot more textbookish, you didn't really have the ability to see things in virtual reality or in 3D to experience uh, a device, right, when you are actually engineering it. So, uh, how have you witnessed the change in the way students today perceive gadgets and when they open things apart? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, well, I think I think with the, 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 the ever-evolving areas of technology and, and the things that you mentioned like AI or uh, just the fact that technology has come on leaps and bounds in the last 5, 10 to 15 years, that it's created a, a more broader and deeper understanding of technology and so people have naturally become more inquisitive and so as an engineering student that's no exception so I would always encourage those people to, to continue to question and to, to ask why and, and, and to really understand how things fundamentally work and so even when it comes to developing your own designs is not also just to throw technology at it for the sake of throwing technology at it um, very much we're, we're, we're in the habit in, in Dyson of, of developing technology that, that solves a fundamental problem. So how are we adding value to the consumer by solving something that's, that's fundamental or by creating something that hasn't existed before? So don't just use technology for the sake of it as well. Absolutely. Now, now when you talk about uh, making something that doesn't exist, uh, it's a very famous quote when Henry Ford said, if I asked people what they wanted, they'd want faster horses. This is true. Yeah, similarly, uh, with Steve Jobs, with some of the greatest minds in the history, and a lot of them have usually thought out of the box, right? Yeah. So. Um, as an engineer, and of course James Dyson when he took apart, took apart the first vacuum cleaner that he had and put it yeah, back together yeah. to make it more efficient. So any hands-on experience that you think a young engineer should absolutely have and go through getting his hands dirty or a personal incident also that you could share on the same lines? Well definitely, it began when my, my mom actually purchased her first Dyson vacuum cleaner before I become a Dyson engineer and so I was very inquisitive and wanted to take it apart. She was very not much uh, aligned with my desire so i'm happy to take her <laughs> dyson apart but i think it's, it's satisfying that inquisitive desire to understand fundamentally how something works and, and equally it's to not accept the technology as it stands today and that really plays back to james and the cyclonic vacuum cleaner he was driven by a divine sense of frustration that the so-called vacuum cleaners of the day was an accepted technology for nearly 100 years, but it wasn't until he took it apart and understood every component that he realized actually where the fundamental flaw was, and the rest is very much history. So it's, it's, it's really dialing into that uh, inquisitive nature and, uh, and really getting your hands dirty and understanding how things work. So Dyson also uh, has a lot of collaborations with young engineers. They have the doors open for them to come in. Um, anything uh, in India that is planned on this level anyway, a young engineer in India can expose Definitely, themselves to you yeah, guys? Yeah. I'm glad you asked. So we have the James Dyson Award and so that's launched in India and we're still we're still looking for applications for that and we're looking for those entries. So the closing date for that is the 20th of July. And, uh, and actually, if we look back last year, three of the top 20 entries were from India. So we know okay. that, the, we know that the, uh, the creativity is out there. Um, and so we would really strongly encourage everybody to, to submit so that we can see those great designs. Absolutely. Any closing thoughts to our viewers? Anything you'd like to tell them? 
Um, that we've, we've always got some very interesting technologies coming, and, and really at Dyson, we've, we've committed ourselves to investing two and a half billion pounds in future technology. So we're looking into things like artificial intelligence and sensors and cameras and robotics and battery packs and all of these various technologies that are really going to take us to the next level. So lots of very exciting things to come. Awesome. Thank you so much for spending time with us on this. Thank you. No problem.